whether you call it ISO or whether you call it ISO. Let's have a look today at ISO invariance and in this case the A7R2. If you know all about this subject then this probably isn't the video for you but if you've not heard of this before then grab a cup of tea because this is of interest. Let's start here and it gives you a list here of what cameras do have this feature if you can call it that feature sort of in the middle cameras and ones that don't you'll probably notice a lot of Canon in there that don't so there are lots and lots of reasons why this would be a fantastic technique in certain situations it's not something I'd use every day but it's certainly a technique I will implement in my night photography so one of the reasons is that by brightening the exposure in post you can selectively brighten some areas and leave others darker exactly that's what I do a lot this reduces the noise in some areas of the image whereas if you set the ISO high in the camera it makes all of the photo have the higher amount of noise and moving on another reason why you'd want to shoot and the image at base ISO and brighten later is when you're concerned about preserving highlight detail. Suppose you're in Times Square in New York, you want to take a shot of the colourful lights above the streets at night if you shoot a high ISO to properly expose. This isn't enough dynamic range to properly preserve highlights and still expose the shadows. However, if you do this after the fact, you could easily brighten the image without blowing out highlight detail in the bright signs. I digress, you can go ahead and read this for yourself. Simply type this into Google and you will get all the results come up. So what kind of settings do I use on my A7R2? Well, for anything where I'm kind of between ISO 100 to say 600, I'm just going to set it at 100 and then deal with it in post. Remember, a lot of these articles were written when we didn't even have uncompressed RAW, which we now do. That's even more of a bonus to do this. So if you're a JPEG shooter, this isn't for you. But for RAW, I'm anywhere between 100 and 600, then that's it. The camera just stays on 100. Once we start going above that, then it's pretty much at 640. If I need to um, go up to kind of 800, because that's easier to select, then fair enough. But my, t my two sort of base ISOs that I use are 100 and 640. Now, there's obviously a lot of talk going on in this video, so what I'm going to do, this is a sort of an introduction, I guess, to this um, ISO invariance, and what I'm going to do is sort of a part two, I guess, which is to put the theory into practice. A picture speaks a thousand words, so what we'll do is we'll actually show some examples on the screen. When you're looking at the, the photo for the EVF, you know, if, if you're not using the ISO high, then you can't always see what you're doing. You could put it into S-Log2 if you want, and that would enable you to see more of the, the photo to give you an idea of what you're doing, if that is indeed a concern for you but, but do some looking into this it's an interesting subject and certainly try it out with your camera take a picture of something and go 100 200 300 400 and see if you can just do exactly the same at 100 and twiddling a few dolls in Lightroom interesting subject an emotional subject I feel so as usual guys it's been emotional. 